Today, I'm gonna to show you an Excel function that you can use to easily get back the stock prices of any stock that you're interested in. And here's how. Just one quick caveat before we jump into the function, this will only work on the newest version of Excel, which is Excel 365. So if you have any older versions, this will not work. So now to the function, let's just start typing out the function and Excel will give us a couple of recommendations based on what we type. We can also hit tab for Excel to auto populate the function for us. So this is what I am going to do. And here we go. We got presented with a bunch of arguments here, stock, start date, end date, interval, headers, and properties. Now, if you don't know what any of these arguments are, that's absolutely fine because you can just quickly Google it. So let's just Google stock history function and Google will give us a bunch of documentation on this. And let's just uh, click on the official Microsoft documentation here and let's go through the arguments. So we see the same arguments here that we saw when we started typing into our function. So we have the stock, which is obviously the stock we want to look for. And all we have to do for this is pass in the ticker name. Um, we have the start date, which is the earliest date for which the data is retrieved. This is pretty self-explanatory and obvious, I think. Then we have the end date, which is an optional argument. Now, optional means that if you don't pass in anything, it'll default to something. So in this case, it'll default to the start date. And if you do pass in something for the end date, then it'll be the latest date for which the data is retrieved. Now we have the interval argument, which is also an optional argument, and it'll default to zero if you don't pass in anything. Zero means that you just want the daily stock prices. But if you want the weekly stock prices, you pass in one. And if you want the monthly stock prices, you can pass in two. Now onto the headers argument, which is again also an optional argument. So it'll default to one, meaning that it'll show the headers if you don't pass in anything. But if you don't want to show the headers, you can pass in zero. And if you want to show the instrument ID and the headers, you can pass in two. Now moving on to property zero to property five. Again, these are optional arguments. So all this means is that if you want to get the date back, you need to pass in zero. If you want to get the close price, you pass in one. If you want to get the open price, you pass in two. And then if you want to get the high price, you pass in three. If you want to get the low, you pass in four. And if you want to get the volume, you pass in five. Now, for the sake of demonstration purposes, I am going to utilize all of these arguments. And before going back to our function, let's just quickly look up a stock ticker name that we want to look for. So how about we just go for some Facebook share prices today? So just Google search Facebook share price. And here we go. This is the ticker name here, Meta, obviously for Meta Platforms Inc. So Meta is the ticker name that we have to remember. So we come into our stock history function and we pass in meta at the top, and then we move on to the start date. Now, the only thing that you must know and remember about the dates here is that you must pass them in in an American date format, meaning that you put the month first, then you put the day, and then you put the year. So this is exactly what I'll be doing, and I am going to be selecting the 1st of January 2020 as my start date, and I am going to get all of the stock prices all the way until the end of say 2022 so December 31st 2022 and then moving on to the other arguments so interval I would like daily data um, I would like to show the instrument ID and the headers I would also like to see the date first and I would like to see the open price then the close price then I would like to see the low price then the high price and then finally I would like to see the volume and then I'm going to close the brackets and hit enter and here we go Excel just did all of the work for us, it extracted the daily stock prices for Meta. Now, just to quickly format this so we can see all of the numbers, let's select all of the columns. And then within the Home tab up here, um, within the Cell section, go to Format and then go to Auto Fit Column Width. And here we go, we can see all of the numbers. Now, to make some sense of this data quickly, let's just select two columns and quickly visualize it. So I am going to the Date cell. I'm holding down shift, pressing the right arrow key, and then holding down control as well, and pressing the down arrow key to select these columns. And then I'm going to go into my insert tab. And then within the insert tab, I'm going into the charts, and I'm going to insert the simplest 2D line chart. And here we go. We have a quick visual representation of meta stock prices over the last two years. And we can see that they did pretty well all the way until October 2021. And well, after that, they didn't do so well. Now, of course, if you wanted to look up the stock prices for different stocks, that's absolutely fine. All you need is the ticker name. So let's just go back to Google, 
and let's find another ticker name. How about we find Amazon, for example? And here we go. So here's the ticker name AMZN for Amazon. So let's just go back to our function. And all we have to do now is replace the ticker meta with the ticker AMZN. So to go to our function quickly, to go to the top of the page, you can hit Control Home as a shortcut. And then let's just go into our function, delete meta and pass in AMZN and hit enter. And here we go. We have the Amazon daily stock prices now. So let's just scroll to the bottom of the page as I believe our line chart is there. And here we go. We have the line chart for the last two years representing the stock prices for Amazon stocks. If you like this video, then a sub to my channel would be great and you can get more content like this. See you in the next one and thanks for watching.